The Book of Forbidden Feelings by Lala Bohang. Another reminder, this is not a motivational book. Pure, you will always be longing for that. Just once in a lifetime, you want to feel pure again. Just like on one good day, when the universe welcomed you to the world for the first time. You're a piece of blank paper. No scratch, no ink, nothing. Just you. So pure, so clean, so white, so ready, so aware. Attachment destroys the purity level to the bottom and heaven under the earth. Always seeking for more destroys the purity level straight back to the darkest sea. Dark chocolate, physical interaction, coffee, love, money, and affection. There are our kinds of heaven on earth, temporary, but enough at least for now. Enough to fill the mundane daily life, enough for now, but then days remind you of the word forever. Forever is a long time, and no matter how much dark chocolate, physical interaction, coffee, love, money, and affection fill your life. It will never be enough except purity when needs disappear and are replaced by nothingness how to be pure again you ask how long is forever i ask back let's play hide and seek hide forever i wanted to say i would love to know your obsessions is it landed house gadgets power domestic life Succulent plans, achievements, money, work, more likes and followers, health, validations, sex, organic food, pets, perfect selfies, children, sports, religion, relationship, minimalism, perfection, muscles, urban toys, shoes, traveling, or fame. But nobody is prepared for that kind of question on a first date. So I say, you look great. I can be so in love with Charles Bukowski's works and after that staring at Taylor Swift's Instagram for two hours straight. There's nothing wrong with that. Contradiction is the most important ingredient for the soul, more than honesty, gratitude and positivity. Contradiction brings out the best in you, also the ability to see the world just as it is. Since my point of view changed, I started to develop a genuine admiration towards various people and works. At the beginning, I started stalking Kendall Jenner's Instagram account and at the same time had a strong envious feeling towards Amelia Ullman and Durga Palashi, basically through their Instagram feeds and interviews and Google images. I'm deeply in love with differentiation. I'm in love with the fact that there's no similarity and boundaries needed to love and admire someone or something. Self-destruction comes in handy nowadays. Date your best friend's ex. Play games on your mobile phone while you're in an important meeting. Wear your fluffy headphones while your mother is talking about the horror of the future and the importance of open-minded feminism. Forget everyone's birthday even when you check your Facebook daily first thing in the morning. Eat junk food six days a week. Just because it's too late to cook, you have few things to do, no time to prepare anything in the kitchen, and it's too dark to go out for food. Simply talk about your friends behind their backs with random people and on every WhatsApp group where your friends are not one of the members. Pick one or two quote images to upload on Instagram that surely will make your ex feel offended. Embrace every mistake and your lover's cheating habit as a typical thing. Self-destruction also plays an important role as a self-medicine. The best of the best. Everybody know that everybody's normal to get to know them better. But instead of not getting to know anybody, you're still willing to get to know strangers because you want to cure your loneliness 
you're still willing to get to know strangers. Because you don't want to spend holiday seasons alone watching Woody Allen's movies, you're still willing to get to know strangers. Because you want real conversations before bed, you're still willing to get to know strangers. Because you want to have dinner at your favorite restaurant on weekdays and not only on weekends, you're still willing to get to know strangers. Because laughing is a party for two. And the cycle goes like this. Strangers become non-strangers, become strangers, all over again. Your happiness is always urgent. Be extremely selective about which memories you want to keep. They define who you are today, tomorrow, and the next 100 years. They determine the kind of heart that will grow in your chest. When it's quiet, start to play hide and seek with your memories and always cheat on the bad ones. They're always too sneaky to be left behind. They will haunt you wherever you go, whoever you are with, especially the memories that you consciously want to forget. Too stubborn to die, too confident to leave, too self-centered to understand, too heavy to disappear. Sometimes it depends on how much love and hate you invest in those memories. Is it too much love and less hate? Is it too much hate and less love? The funny thing is the more hate you put in, the harder you forget. The more anger and rage in it, the sadder you become. When everything goes really bad, but you're able to get through that shitty situation, you're magically reborn. You feel more loved and more attached to the person you hate the most. That's why the hardest memories to forget is the worst memories to remember. People are funny. They are always willing to hurt themselves. And when everything comes to an end, there's nothing but this exhausting effort to forget. You go home after doing all things you're not interested in for a whole day. Meeting people who are not dreamers. Taking notes on things you would never pay attention to. Discussing matters that would never affect your mind and your life. Listening to everybody's unimportant thoughts about what's important and what's not. Breathing in air which is located in the most cold-blooded place on earth, cold force routine. The energy is so magnetic, it comes from your basic needs, validation, things, and friendship. A day ends, just like another day. You come home and try to forget. Try to make yourself feel better. It's not a life I want to live, your soul says. I'm better than this. I want to be remembered. I want my death to be another door to more amazing things, to be celebrated, to live longer than my body, to be able to live something remarkable. The sun is finally awake and today will be the same as yesterday. Hold your judgment in your tongue until the end of the world. Roses are red, the sky is blue, alone in my room being overly negative. A hundred years of airplane mode. Hey guys, this is Angelica. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you liked it. And if you do like it, don't forget to give the thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And ring that bell so you will be notified whenever I upload a new video. And the next part will be the last one, so I'm kind of excited, like finally this will be the end of our journey with this book. Anyway, I think that's it for now, see you on the next video, bye bye!